Former Transnet Chairperson Popo Molefe has resigned from the state-owned company. Minister of Public Enterprises, uh, uh, Minister uh, Pravin Godan, replaced Molefe as chair with Andile Sangu earlier this year, but Molefe remained on the board. He's calling it a day following the resignations of three senior executives, namely Portia Darby, who ends her term as CEO at the end of October. Transnet CFO Nongurule Godlamini left the company at the end of September, while Sizam Zimela, Transnet Freight Rail CEO also resigned. The Department of Public Enterprises has thanked Molefa for what it termed his immense contribution. We are now joined by Professor Mark Swelling. He is uh, the co-director at the Stellenbosch University Centre for Sustainable Transitions. And uh, he joins us via our video link. Um, uh, Professor, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, on the late edition. Of course, uh, we have seen those resignations coming out uh, from uh, Transnet. I mean, uh, this is uh, when we talk about the latest one coming out from the Transnet board. What do you make of uh, Bobo Molefe's departure? Well, I think what we are seeing uh, in Transnet, but also in other state-owned enterprises like uh, like ESCOM, is a breakdown in governance and leadership. And so it's not surprising that the tensions and conflicts that uh, emerge as a result of this uh, have affected somebody like Popo Malefe, who has served on that board uh, for, far, for, for, for a long time. And I mean, when you look at uh, the resignation of uh, Popo Molefe, I mean, this comes just after uh, the resignations of very senior uh, employees uh, at Transnet. Those are three senior executives. Uh, surely this is concerning uh, if we have somebody on the board uh, resigning as well as uh, senior executives uh, within Transnet. It's extremely concerning and all South Africans uh, who are affected on a daily basis by what is happening in our state-owned enterprises, in particular ESCOM and Transnet, are extremely concerned because exactly when we have our, we are facing our greatest crises, that is when we see uh, key leadership figures uh, resigning from these institutions, and that is extremely concerning. And Transnet, in particular, uh, is facing a very serious crisis with major economic implications for our country. When you look at the latest resignations coming out of uh, Transnet, uh, you know, what does it mean uh, for South Africa on a greater scale, especially at a time uh, where rail is being marked as, uh, you know, uh, a mode of transport, which is uh, very important for the South African economy? Well, obviously, it, it has very serious uh, implications, in particular, if we are looking for a rapid turnaround and an, and an improvement uh, in, in our rail services. That cannot be achieved until ESCO, uh, a Transnet sorry, is broken up into more manageable proportions with their own separate boards. And that is going to be the kind of framework. But without the leadership that is required to achieve that, it's going to be impossible for us to look forward to rapid solutions. And, uh, Professor, when it comes to uh, state-owned enterprises, I mean, this is not uh, the first one. I mean, you make mention of uh, the problems uh, we are seeing uh, within, uh, you know, ESCOM itself uh, when we are struggling uh, with issues around load shedding. I mean, if you look at even the former officials uh, who have left um, uh, the power utility, they speak uh, of, uh, you know, micromanagement uh, from uh, the public enterprises minister, Pravin Gordon, and at the same time, some even speak about interference. You, you know, with the latest resignations, do you think it speaks uh, to uh, what some uh, officials have complained about uh, within these SOEs? There is widespread agreement that the current governance model is structurally flawed. Uh, it is completely and utterly unviable to have the kinds of state-owned enterprises that can drive the economy which are vulnerable to political interference. That is completely un unacceptable. One, so that, hence what you have is the state-owned enterprise council appointed by the president suggesting some kind of overarching holding company that could own the 
state-owned enterprises and following models in other parts of the world create um, uh, a situation where these state-owned enterprises are protected from political interference. I don't necessarily agree with the proposals, but the basic sentiment is correct that we need to change fundamentally the governance of our state-owned enterprises so that boards can uh, play their proper role, that chief executives can be appointed who have the necessary skills and experience. And it brings me to this. I mean, we've seen these proposals over many years in terms of how uh, state-owned enterprises can be turned around. Do you think that it is still possible uh, to turn state-owned enterprises around if we have uh, such senior executives complaining about micromanagement and as well as uh, political interference? Well, it's true. We have been talking about uh, changing the governance of state-owned enterprises for for many, many, many years, and there have been previous commissions and so on and so mm. forth. Correct. But what is different now is that we are facing a very serious economic crisis as a result of the breakdown of the governance of state-owned enterprises. But I think the, the, the extent and, and, and depth of the crisis, as well as the involvement of multiple stakeholders, stakeholders in the in the solutioning, not not just government, might result in a strategic shift. And uh, Professor, how important uh, is uh, Transnet to our economy, especially also uh, when it comes uh, to the issue of uh, job creation? Because, uh, like we said a bit earlier on, it's such an important mode of transport to make the economy also work. Operation Bulin Lela in the presidency uh, has focus, is focusing on major structural reforms. The top three are energy, water, and logistics. Hmm. Uh, and those are absolutely essential if we are going to have the smallest chance of uh, economic recovery. At the moment, our economic recovery is is inconceivable uh, without fixing uh, the, the rail network, transnet, ESCOM, and, uh, the, and the water situation. Those are the top three structural reform priorities. And that says it all. We have to address these if we want to turn our economy around. All right, uh, Mr. Swilling, thank you so much uh, uh, for your time and for your insight here on uh, the late edition. That is uh, Professor Mark Swilling. He is the co-director at Stellenbosch University Centre for Sustainable Transitions.